Jan's Reviews is about as much of a graphic artist as Nicole Arbor is a comedian. Oh, and Jan, you're about as much of a comedian as Nicole Arbor is. You're both about as funny as a colonoscopy administered by a plumber. Hey kids, Straight Talking Fedora Chick here, and welcome to the channel. If you are new here, we are a social commentary slash story time channel focusing mainly, but not exclusively, to mental health issues, social issues of the day. If you are into that kind of thing, please consider subscribing and please hit that little ringy dingy icon below so you can be notified every time I upload. I know I'm a little late to this party and honestly, I had been debating doing this video until I saw this tweet yesterday. Now, before I go on, I know a lot of Jan's Review supporters are also my subs and viewers who may not like this video. Likewise, you don't have to follow or even like Peter Mon or anyone else I mention in this video for that matter, but I am asking you to keep an open mind and please watch. I will back up each and every one of my arguments with receipts and you can draw your own conclusions. This is all I ask. I will get to Jan's lies, bullying, and body shaming. And her obvious obsession with Peter Mon. But first, let's address this tweet. The tweet that was the deciding factor in me doing this video in the first place. For those who don't know, Peter Mon is about 25 years or so into recovery from addiction. As somebody who has been clean for 20 years, I can attest that sometimes, despite it getting easier with each passing year, many like Peter and myself, with that kind of time behind them, can still struggle and there can still be triggers. I'm not saying that this would necessarily be a trigger for Peter, I don't know the man, but don't know how he gets through day-to-day -day life as far as his own sobriety is concerned. But the folks on Jan's comment section, as you can see here, really should have known better. Notice how Jan hearted those comments. I think any reasonable person can infer that she endorsed those comments, at least on some level. And have we not learned our lessons from the rewired soul? How he assumed Bobby Burns was under the influence when he crashed his car last year? Same analogy holds here. I don't have to tell you how this kind of concern trolling is dangerous, that it can potentially be to a recovering addict, no matter who it is. Plus, as we saw in that Twitter clip just earlier, the comment is clearly pill-shaming. Even if Peter Mon, and honestly, nobody really knows unless he's revealed something of this nature to his audience, even if we he were to take some medication to either deal with anxiety or an issue like ADD, meds some people simply need just to walk through life. It is not up to anyone to judge him or his recovery or anyone else's for that matter. How many times must we go over that? Now, why does she call Peter Don Mon? Is he like the mafioso godfather of YouTube or something? We knew he was YouTube famous, but godfather? She's uploaded approximately 40 videos just on Peter Mon. Hmm, sound familiar? It's comparable to the number of videos the Rewired Soul did on Trisha Paytas. He's been called out by numerous YouTubers on his obsession with Trisha. So Jan should be held to account similarly over her own apparent obsession for Peter Mon. She goes after him on his review channel for the products he reviews. Hell, she even critiques his vacations, complaining that he basically never leaves his hotel room and such. In the first place, even if this were true, 
What business it is it of ours how he spends his vacation? Just another example of how the obsession went on. It's important to note that for a year, Peter has remained pretty much mum over her videos. Here's the thing. While Peter Mon is not without his own controversies in the past, but for a drama channel, he pretty much stays in his own lane these days. Here's a clue. No one but Jan is making videos about him these days, trying to stir up drama where there is really none to be had. Until, of course, the merch. And when Peter decided to fight back on Twitter, as anyone would against a bully, even those who usually don't follow or even like Peter Mon have come out in his defense. I am going to guess that the straw that broke the camel's back was the fact that she added t-shirts and mugs to her merch with Peter's face emblazoned with silly boom and splat and such. Real mature, Jan! Many, rightfully in my opinion, sided with Peter here, as mentioned. I'm not sure of the laws in the U.S. or even in the U.K. where Jan lives, but here in Canada, this would be illegal unless she had Peter's consent to slap his selfies on her merch. She claimed it was in humor that she was a comedian. Okay, yeah, we already covered that at the top of this video. And, of course, a graphic artist. You know, boys and girls, I can take a screenshot, slap a few filters on it, and add some cartoony fonts and call myself a graphic artist. As you can see, it's not the first time that she's plastered somebody else's face on her merch. Not that long ago, as you can see, she plastered Shane Dawson's face as well. Yes, she had a bee in her knickers over Shane Dawson and his success. Classy, ain't she? Jan claimed in her live stream ad nauseum that she does not body shame anyone. Uh, Jan, let's take a look here. Peter needs to go on a diet, me thinks. Stop getting on the treadmill. <laughs> go for a walk. You've got three dogs. Bloody go and walk them instead of sitting on your behind. He looks as if he's, he's got monkey teeth, bad breath, farts that stink out of room. No. He was filming as he's walking. He's walking behind Alex. So all we get... The main shots we get are of Alex's posterior. That's it. Oh, that's very nice. Thanks. Yeah, we really want to see that walking up the hill, don't we? <laughs> so all you've got is, is Peter holding his camera or phone or whatever. And he's like... <laughs> yeah, she went there, boys and girls. Making fun of Peter for being short of breath following a hike. I mean, seriously? I don't have to tell you how nasty it is to be poking fun of such a thing. We just don't know what might be happening. Maybe he has respiratory issues. Never know. When even one of her most loyal viewers and mods takes her to task. You just know she's gone way too far. Oh yeah, I must point out as well, on two different occasions, I was watching live stream at Bipolar Corner where she happens to be a mod. The first time, Gary acknowledged my presence and wished me a happy birthday. Not the talk of someone who did not want me interacting in his live chat. Jan apparently was about to block me from the live chat, but then acquiesced saying, okay, she would let me go because it was my birthday. Unless, of course, I mentioned a particular topic she did not like. Gee, thanks, Jan. The other occasion... I had asked a question to Gary in his live stream. Jan got off her rocker and basically told me 
Something along the lines of pay attention or get out. Gary told her that my asking the question was okay. After all, I was at that live stream to support Gary as I usually do. Not to pick internet cat fights with Jan. See how this goes? Not even her live stream. Not her channel. But that did not stop her from trying to pick a fight. Of course, I ended up leaving both of those live streams as I was not going to engage. Of course, there was that speculation of Peter's professional life that just refuses to die somehow. L Loves T clarified this about seven months ago at the height of the Rewired Soul Shite Show. And here's a reminder. So, Peter worked in a treatment centre back in May 1995 to January 2008. He achieved his master's degree in social work back in 1999 during his time at work at the centre under supervision by both clinical and medical supervisors. During that time, he was required to keep studying for continued education credits to keep working. Since psychotherapists can be social workers too, as a counsellor with a master's background in social work, Peter was accurate in using that title at the time. But the laws have massively changed since then in the state of Indiana. But anyway, when Peter left to start his own practice, he still worked under supervision until he decided to move on to life coaching, which doesn't need any kind of licensing at all. But that was all fully disclosed. Kids, he must watch kids' videos. That's a bit worrying, guys. Okay. Anyway. Now, you wouldn't be accusing Peter of some savory act with children now, would you? Ah, uh, yes. She meant it as a joke, of course. Not funny, Jan. Jan, like most on YouTube and follow its drama at least a little bit, know that the now disgraced John Cookian did accuse Peter of harming children a long time ago. Oh yeah, and Jan claimed that Peter should have reached out to her privately. Except most of us who have some memory of last summer and an inkling as to her incredibly visible nastiness knows that this is simply not her modus operandi. I seem to remember when she disagreed vehemently, to put it mildly, with Eric, a.k.a. Driven Industries, where she exploded with yet another Twitter tantrum on him. Eric himself did ask several times to ask her to reach out to him privately, and she never did, and continued tantruming that she would not contact him privately. For those who know Eric, he is not hard to reach, as he does give out his phone number in an effort to offer peer-to-peer -peer support to those who may be struggling. So Jan, if you refused to talk to Eric privately last summer when he requested you do so, why should we believe you would be willing to discuss your issues with Peter Mon privately? Next question I must ask, does she have an issue with gay people? There was another Twitter tantrum last September where Jan accused a woman for her ethnicity, a woman who happens to be Welsh, and she also attacked, yep, her appearance, where she implied she just didn't look girly enough for her like... But no, Jan never body shames, nor does she fixate negatively on somebody's appearance. Jan is a bully and a liar, pure and simple, and must be held to account. She even Last lesson of the day, boys and girls. If you poke a sleeping dog long enough with a stick, the said dog will wake up and bite you. Same goes for bullying and not doing anything about it for a certain period of time. Eventually... That will come back and bite you too. She even suggested that she will likely continue to make videos about her Don Mon. She doubles down on the merch bearing his face 
and she would like to do the same regarding her use of Shane Dawson's face. That's going to do it for this video. Please give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the way out the door. Please consider subscribing and hit that little ringy dingy icon below so you can be notified every time I upload or go live. Take care of yourselves and each other. And remember, if there is somebody in your midst who is at risk or vulnerable, please take the time to look in on them. Those few hours you spend sharing a meal or even just lending a sympathetic ear can make all the difference in the world to that individual. And I'll see you in the next one. Straight Talk and Fedora Chick over and out.